Welcome to Using Read and Write for Google, an accommodation tool for K-12 teachers. This is an online video course designed to share the purpose of using a digital tool to help students access grade level content through a text-to-speech accommodation and how this fits into the larger picture of using accessible educational material. This video will then show you step-by-step -step how to access the Read and Write for Google extension and use it with students in practical scenarios. At the conclusion of the course, you will take a 10-question true or false quiz in Eduphoria. You will need to get a 70% to get credit for this video course. Using text-to-speech, such as Read and Write for Google, is considered a tool to support accessible educational material. Watch this Simply Said video from the National Center on Accessible Educational Material and the PACER Center to explain about accessible educational materials. In the video, they will refer to accessible instructional materials. The most correct and current terminology is accessible educational materials, and we will refer to them as such throughout the rest of this course. Reading is something most of us do every day. We read for pleasure, to get information, to do our assignments, and we read at work to do our jobs. Text is all around us, and we use it every day to help us navigate our way through the world. But when a disability makes it difficult to access text, we may need a little help. Fortunately, help is available. Welcome to Understanding Accessible Instructional Materials, inspired by CommonCraft.com. Sometimes children have disabilities that prevent them from accessing print in the same way their peers can. Someone with a visual impairment might not be able to see the print in a book. A person with a physical impairment might not be able to turn the pages of a book or be in a good position to read. And someone with a reading disability like dyslexia might not be able to figure out what the words really mean. To succeed in school, these students need learning materials presented in a way that works for them. We're going to talk about two parts of AIM, the content and a way to interact with the content. First, let's talk about the content. These types of learning materials are called Accessible Instructional Materials, or AIM. If elementary and secondary students with disabilities need AIM, then schools are required to provide these in a timely manner. If you think your child needs accessible instructional materials, bring it up with your IEP team. You and the other members of the IEP team determine if a student needs to receive the same content as other children in one or more specialized formats. There are four different specialized formats available, Braille, Large Print, Audio, and Digital Text. The right formats are chosen based on how a student will access the information contained in printed materials, which format lets them work as independently as possible, which format will help the student develop literacy skills, and which format will let them successfully participate and make progress in general education curriculum and on IEP goals. You have some information about the content, now let's talk about ways to interact with the content. The IEP team determines what else is needed. It could be technology, such as a digital audio player, training for students, family, and school staff, accommodations, such as a quiet place to listen to audio files, or specialized instruction to learn how to use audio, braille, or other formats, coordinated services between teachers, physical therapists, occupational therapists, and others, or support services to maintain equipment and support the use of technology. So now you know a little more about accessible instructional materials, but you may have some specific questions about AIM. There are many resources available to help you learn more. These include Accessible Instructional Materials, AIM, Basics for Families. Accessible Instructional Materials, AIM, a technical guide for families and advocates. The AIM Navigator, a free online tool to help teams make decisions about a student's need for AIM and how to meet that need, and many more. This has been Accessible Instructional Materials in Simple Language, brought to you by the PACER Center.
in collaboration with the National Center on Accessible Instructional Materials, where help is always available. Accessible educational material can take many forms. Using a digital tool, like Read and Write for Google, is just one of the many tools to access them. When deciding on a tool to help students access education material, we need to first consider if that tool becomes an accommodation or a modification. An accommodation changes the how of learning, whereas a modification changes the what of learning. But how do you know? Is it always a black or white answer? To determine if using a tool or method becomes an accommodation or modification, you have to look very closely at the standard and the intent of that standard. Does using a particular tool or method impact the integrity of the standard? This statement from Margaret J. McLaughlin, PhD, makes this more clear. The main thing to remember is that an accommodation's purpose is to offset the impact of a disability so a student has equal access to the content. For this course, we are looking at using Read and Write for Google with the purpose of using it as an accommodation tool. There could be legitimate and very useful purposes for using this tool as a modification. Be careful to look if using a text-to-speech tool is an accommodation or modification. Consider it standard by standard and student by student. Let's apply this concept with an analogy. If you wanted to access a luxurious bungalow in an exotic tropical island paradise off the beaten path, you might need to cross a bridge to get there. You could swim there if you had strong fluency and decoding skills but it would be much faster to get to your destination of the grade level teaks of main idea, plot analysis, inferencing, cause and effect, and other critical skills by crossing the accommodation tool bridge. You would then be able to spend your time and energy for the purpose of your trip. There are three main factors to consider before evaluating the use of any accommodation on a state assessment. First, is this tool used independently by the student? The student cannot receive staff help to use the tool during the assessment. Secondly, is the tool being routinely used by the student? The worst time to introduce a new tool is the day of a test. This increases anxiety for the student and staff. The tool should be used for benchmarks, cumulative assessments, and most importantly on everyday assignments to help them access the material to master. Lastly, it should be effective for that student. Obviously, you would never want to use a tool that was ineffective. To inadvertently avoid making this mistake, we need to look at the use of an accommodation tool on a student-by-student -student basis and give them time to determine their effectiveness and or what adjustments would need to be made to make it effective. Please remember, if using a text-to-speech tool, they should be receiving that in the classroom for instruction and demonstration of mastery. While we want to use this tool for benchmark assessments, this is not the place to try out for the first time to see if it is beneficial. You must first always try it as a classroom accommodation. Classroom accommodations drive testing accommodations. You need to have this documented correctly based on the program of support for the student. For example, an IEP or 504 plan for a student with disabilities, an ELL plan for an English language learner, or an RTI plan for a student with documented evidence of a reading difficulty. The eligibility criteria has broadened for the 2017 STAR testing by TEA. Students can be considered if they are using a text-to-speech tool independently and routinely for English language learners, students with a disability being serviced with special education or 504, dyslexia, or if a student has documented evidence of a reading difficulty. Always reference the TEA guiding document when determining eligibility for a student and what test it can apply to at the given TEA link. 
If you determine your student meets criteria, the text-to-speech tool will be embedded in the STAR online version of that particular assessment. This is only available on the online version of STAR. For the Reading STAR online test, the designated support of text-to-speech will only read test questions, answer choices, and embedded supports that the student requires. It will not read the reading passages. When on the TEA testing accommodation site, you will find the guidance document under Designated Supports, Oral, Signed Administration. This two-page document goes into specific detail on the description of the designated support, the assessments it can be considered for, eligibility criteria, authority for making decisions and the required documentation, examples, and special considerations. For more specifics on the steps and process for teams to consider, please contact your campus testing coordinator. You can also view this collaboratively created video presented on Aligning Classroom Instruction to STAR Accommodations on the Testing Services website. Now we will go into detail on how to access Read and Write for Google Extension and how to integrate it into your classroom activities and assignments. This is Lori Garcia, Assistive Technology Specialist for Northeast ISD. For this training, I will demonstrate a Google Chrome browser extension called Read and Write for Google Chrome. This is a fantastic and free text-to-speech support for your students. This first bit of information is very important, so please listen carefully. If the students are using a PC or a laptop or even a VDI computer in the library or computer lab, then they will need to complete an extra step and log into the device plus log into the Google Chrome browser with their NEISD student Google account. Logging into the browser is separate from logging into your Google account. When you log in, you'll notice that you already have some extensions there. These have been auto-added by technology services because of the support that they provide. If these do not auto-populate, then the user is not logged into the browser or they did not click link data. I really recommend using a Chromebook for simplicity because the students will only need to log in once. These three lines are called the menu bar. They will open up your options and settings within the Google Chrome browser. Click on it once, navigate to settings, if you are logged into your Northeast ISD Google account, then this step is already completed for you. After you have entered your NEISD username and password for the Google Chrome browser, you will link the data on your account to sync all of your bookmarks and extensions. You can add that read and write Google extension from the Google Chrome Web Store. You will click on Add to Chrome. Read and write for Google Chrome. You can see I've already added it to mine, but you would click on Add to Chrome and that will generate a pop-up asking you for further authorization so that you can access your Google Drive with the Read and Write for Google Chrome browser extension. Now I want to give you a brief preview of using the Read and Write extension before you run off and play with it. In my Google Drive, I'm going to open up a new Google Doc. I'm going to fetch some text from a Microsoft Word file that I have. I will just copy and paste, copy from Microsoft Word file, and paste into my Google Chrome browser with, within Google Docs. Okay. So as you can see, when I'm within the browser right here, I have two options for using the Google Chrome extension. I can use it right here as a web reader, and in Google Docs, I can use it right here just by clicking it once, and this powerful little purple puzzle piece will drop down and give me options to have the text read aloud. For the first 30 days, students will have the full feature version of this toolbar. But after that, they will have the only piece we are really focusing on for this accommodation, and that is the text-to-speech supports. Students quickly recognize this triangle as the play button because it is the same icon on all modern devices. Let's read a small portion of this passage from the Protocols for Accommodations and Reading, which I have pasted in. 
The Midnight Rite of Paul Revere is a famous American legend. We know that Revere rode through the streets of Boston to warn militiamen that the British troops were coming. But very few of us have ever heard of Sybil Loddington's ride. Okay. Notice how the read and write highlights the words as it reads the text aloud. There is much research on having the words highlighted as text is read aloud, and this is very important for increasing student attention to the reading task. It supports fluency, it helps increase decoding and sight word attack skills. Furthermore, we know student comprehension is affected by the rate of speech. So let's adjust the voice and rate of speech using the settings cog in the upper right hand corner of the read and write toolbar. I'm going to adjust it to a slower pace because students with a processing disorder may need the text read more slowly, while students with a visual impairment and no cognitive delay may need it read more quickly. The actual voice can also be altered to student preference. On April 26, 1777, 16 year old Sybil Luddington rode through the night. She alerted her neighbors and the local militia troops that the British were burning the city of Danbury. Now, I will navigate to the assistive technology portion of our NEISD special ed webpage on the intranet, and I will demonstrate how to use the Read and Write for Google Chrome extension as a web reader. Special ed. Related services, assistive technology, and we are looking at text to speech supports. If you'll remember, I had two ways to access the Read and Write for Google Chrome. This up here in my URL bar, right here, I click on it one time, even though I'm not in Google Docs, and the toolbar pops up also, the same toolbar. I can move this to where it's comfortable for me. I want to highlight some text and have it read aloud. Assistive technology, supporting student access to education. Assistive technology it is a tool which helps a student with a disability accomplish a task at school, at home, or in the community. I'm going to click on text-to-speech supports. And here you will find another version of this same tutorial for adding the extension to NEISD student Google Chrome browsers. I've created this one with clickable links for you. Now, as I stated, students have the full version for a trial period of 30 days, but teachers can sign up to keep the free full version throughout the publisher's website. On this, excuse me. With this link right here, I have um, simplified things and given you this link to where you can sign up to get the full educator version of the Read and Write for free. Now, we do need to be aware of some challenges for students uh, using any text-to-speech program to support student comprehension and demonstration of mastery. First of all, math can be an enormous challenge for our students. When using text-to-speech supports, it can often read the equations incorrectly, plus math is just hard to listen to. Try this, pretend you have a visual impairment and close your eyes. I will read you a math problem from the eighth grade teaks. Can you solve it? A tap drips one drop of water every second. It takes 3,000 such drops to fill a 200 milliliter glass. Estimate how much water was wasted in one day by this dripping tap. A, 10 liters. B, 8 liters, C, 4 liters, or D, 6 liters. Each of us is educated beyond eighth grade, but you can see that this is a difficult task, and it is easy to empathize with our students who struggle academically. Now, there are several fundamental issues with, the, with speaking math, whether it is, you know, a, a human being or whether it is a computer. One is that not all of us are trained mathematicians, and just as a digital program, we may also incorrectly read the problem to the student. Another is that listening to an equation requires a high degree of short-term memory. Math expressions must be retained in memory and then compared with the audio information to discern the answer. 
That is hard. Keep in mind, language arts has its own challenges. On STAR, the reading passages cannot be read aloud because they are gauging reading comprehension and not listening comprehension. When formatting those reading activities with the read and write extension, we use the snipping tool. And we take a screenshot of the passage and embed that as a JPEG, but some other programs can still identify the text in an image and read it. You will notice on NEISD benchmarks that this same method is used and they will also place a JPEG of the reading passages. In fact, sometimes it's wise to place a JPEG of math equations and then type out the words in long form so the computer will capture it a little better and the students can also see it. Let's look at another practical application of the read and write for Google Chrome browser extension. I'm going to show you how to take a Google Doc sent to you via email and place that in a Google Classroom with text-to-speech support. One way this can be helpful to you is in assigning classwork to students who have oral administration as an accommodation. Another way this can be helpful is in disseminating NEISD district benchmarks to students. I'm starting with a Google Doc emailed to me. One easy method is to copy the link address. But if I already have this file in Google Drive, then it's even simpler. Now, this is not a Google Classroom tutorial. If you need more information about Google Classroom, you can easily search YouTube or contact your NEISD campus ITS or Instructional Technology Specialist for a training. I'm navigating to classroom.google.com and I'm choosing the correct class. Go to the stream to add the assignment. Hover over this plus sign and roll on up to create assignment. Give the assignment a title. And you'll click on the Google Drive icon if you have the assignment or the assessment in Google Drive. You can also add a link. And if it is something that you will upload from your PC, click on this paper clip. This is a standard process in many programs, not just Google Classroom. And the, you can uh, click to open them up in Google Docs. Assign them to the students. And the students will click to open the assignment in Google Docs, which if they are logged into the Google Chrome browser, they will have access immediately to the read and write extension to have it read aloud to them. North, Northeast ISD, watermark. I hope you've gained some useful knowledge from this tutorial. I would love to hear your success stories with integrating this accommodation into your classroom tasks. Thank you for watching this video on using Read and Write for Google, an accommodation tool for K-12 teachers. We hope this helped give you a broader understanding of using a text-to-speech tool to access accessible educational material, and how to help you and your students easily use this tool for all content areas. If you have additional questions, please reach out to us. Don't forget, at the conclusion of the course, to take the 10-question True and False quiz to get credit for this course in Eduphoria. Good luck in your implementation of using this tool with your students to help build their independence and mastery of the TEKS.